Hello students, looking at current affairs for 12th Feb, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 12, we we'll looked at them in detail. The first one, AAP sweeps Delhi with 62 seats, BJP trounced. So Arvind Kejriwal and his Aam Admi party were voted back to power with a massive mandate in Delhi assembly elections. The party won 62 seats in the 70 member house. Remaining 8 seats went to BJP. No other party got any seats. Congress again like last assembly elections, failed to open its accounts, did not get a single seat. BJP earlier had got five seats in 2015 legislative assembly elections and now it has got eight, while, uh, while Aam Admi Party, it got uh, uh, three seats less from last time. That's how it is. So, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said, the people of Delhi have given birth to a new kind of politics, the politics of work. This is a vote for those who built schools, who provide electricity and health care. This augurs well for the country. And then even for Congress, when it failed to win even a single seat, the candidates which stood for elections, like out of 63 candidates, uh, 66 candidates, 63 are set to uh, have their deposits forfeited. So you have to give a security deposit if you are standing for elections. And uh, the security deposit for Lok Sabha elections is 25,000 rupees per candidate, while for assembly elections it is 10,000 rupees. So in this case it was 10,000 rupees per candidate and for 63 candidates of Congress now, since they failed to secure even more than one-sixth of the valid votes polled, so they will lose their security deposit. So this uh, one-sixth comes to a percentage 16.6 percent. Right. For SCST, the amount is lesser, you can see. So, this is 12,500 and 5,000 respectively for SC and SC in case of Lok Sabha elections instead of 25,000. Then next is, Ministry of Earth Science may go in for decadal forecast system. So, Ministry of Earth Science is planning a decadal forecast system along the lines of UK Met Office to ensure better predictability in the climate time scale. So, the 6th International Conference on Climate Services is being held in Pune-based IITM, that is Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. So, here a system based on coupled climate model is being proposed and you know, search is going on on this by India. So, weather forecasting, Indian Meteorological Department functions under Ministry of Earth Science. You should know that. So, India also wants to understand you know, and ensure better predictability of climate. You know, so, decadal forecast system will be used. So, it will utilize signals emanating from deep oceans to predict decadal climate changes. So, there are a number of gaps in understanding of regional climate variability in connection with the global phenomena like the Indian Ocean Dipole is also a new phenomena like we used to discuss about El Nino and La Nina. Now, there is this Indian Ocean Dipole which also has an impact on weather in the country. So, in a magnet, the way there are two poles of opposite value. So, similarly, this is Indian Ocean Dipole. So, comparing the western and eastern Indian Ocean region. So, this is the western part and this is the eastern part. India lies here. So, here you can see positive Indian Ocean Dipole is when it is cooler in the tropical eastern Indian Ocean region and warmer in the tropical western Indian Ocean region. So, here you can see this is shown. This is positive Indian Ocean Dipole and you can see it has uh, a relation with this region as such. We are talking about comparing these two regions, Western and Eastern Indian Ocean. Negative Indian Ocean Dipole is when it is cooler in the tropical Western Indian Ocean region and warmer here, reversed. So, that is the, here you can see how, you know, when it is warmer, then convection increases, evaporation increases, and you can see convection results in clouds being formed and rainfall. So, when temperature is warmer, there will be rainfall. So, how the Indian Ocean Dipole is also affects Indian climate. Then next is, Supreme Court backs move to demolish restaurants near Hampi site. So, Supreme Court has confirmed the Kerala, confirmed Karnataka government authorities decision to demolish restaurants, hotels, guest houses and other buildings constructed in Virupapura, Gaddi and Oval Islet formed by Tungabhadra River and located west of Hampi World Heritage Site. So, Constructions here are said to be in violation of Mysore Ancient and Historical Monuments and Archaeological Sites and Remains Act of 1961. So, 
so uh, the court supreme court has also upheld the validity of state notification of 1988 which clearly indicates that the entire village of virupura gaddi is a protected zone so it lies near the world heritage site hampi so there are these group of monuments in hampi you can see its site is located on the southern bank of tungabhadra river it once formed the seat of the mighty vijayanagar empire then next is agri zone may not affect ongoing tamil nadu projects so tamil nadu chief minister egappi palani swami has announced that the kaveri delta region will be declared as a protected special agriculture zone but this will not affect various ongoing projects in the districts like the, uh, this was actually targeted at the central government initiative to make hydrocarbon exploration easier without requiring environment impact assessment and without even public consultation so such relaxations had created fear in tamil nadu in the kaveri delta region which is an agricultural region so that is why state government has made this taken this initiative declaring the region as protected special agriculture zone but then it has clarified that this will not affect ongoing projects including hydrocarbon exploration projects it will only prohibit fresh attempts so there is already a proposed 50000 crore investment in kuddalore by haldia petrochemicals so it is said this would be allowed since the unit is outside the kaveri delta core region and also it is replacing only another private player so such other justifications given for ongoing projects in tamil nadu the next is cleaning of drains and septic tanks claimed 110 lives in 2019 so the number of people who died while cleaning sewers and septic tanks in the country has increased by almost 62% from 68 in 2018 to 110 in 2019 so this is data given by social justice and empowerment ministry in the lok sabha so these incidents of manual scavenging which is actually banned under prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and their rehabilitation act 2013 uh, the incidents so the act is banned incidents of deaths due to manual scavenging are reported so this these are deaths so actual number of manual scavenging cases may be very very high. so it is said total uh, uh, manual scavengers uh, which have been identified by municipalities and gram panchayats in 13 states are 14559 and a national survey conducted showed 48345 manual scavengers so these number of such manual scavengers are there but their rehabilitation also has not been uh, satisfactorily done so here you can see number of deaths in the last 5 years by cleaning sewers and septic has increased significantly in 2019 so as it is manual scavenging is banned but uh, you know the number of households indian households who identified themselves in man as manual scavengers in census 2011 were 182505 out of these numbers who have identified who have been identified by state government as manual scavengers is 12226 and number of manual scavengers who have got one time cash payment is 7346 as no rehabilitation so that is the case and here you can see the act has been formulated in 1993 a first landmark it was the first landmark act which outlawed work in unsanitary and dry non flush latrines so dry latrines non flush latrines have to be cleaned regularly so that is the case and those uh, those latrines which are not connected to Uh, to pipelines to take away sewage they are connected to septic tanks so all the sewage connects in the septic tanks human excreta collects in septic tanks which have to be cleaned regularly otherwise the gas which develops is uh, very very uh, toxic it can result in death as we have seen in such cases so that is there so on one hand we have swachh bharat abhiyan which calls for building toilets but then building toilets and having proper sewage and you know excreta disposal is also very very important so here you can see so 2013 we had a new law which expanded the definition of manual scavenging to include even cleaning of not just unsanitary latrines but also septic tanks and railway tracks so railways which is a huge network in the country the railways do not have latrines or septic tanks the the human excreta goes on the tracks so that also has to be cleaned regularly so railways is said to be the largest employer of manual scavengers so railways is also talking of eco toilets green toilets 
but still we are long way to go so manual scavenging is a reality in the country though it is prohibited under the law and also not just that that prohibited but they should be given protective gear which is not seen not even by the railways or in when they are privately employed so, yeah. even supreme court in 2014 has mandated that sewer workers should also be included in these laws given that they had to deal with human excreta and toxic while cleaning and compensation of 10 lakh was uh, ordered by the supreme court for those who died so this is that maximum number of such uh, deaths occur in tamil nadu So many FIRs have been registered. Many cases compensation is sought, but only in 31% of the cases compensation is awarded, cash compensation. Rehabilitation you can see is 0%. In self-employment or alternative job or even children getting benefited under pre-matric scholarships. So this is a study conducted by Rashtriya Garima Abhyan on as such. Uh, act its sections where how. You know, employers are obliged, obliged to provide protective gear. The survey saw, study saw 100% violation of this provision. They are not provided protective gear. Cleaning, provide cleaning devices, you know, not just doing by manually, that is also not provided, 100% violation. And provide, uh, you know, uh, protective measures like, you know, supervision, completion of work in daytime, this is also 100% violated. Then next is, 1.25 lakh to attend Kim Cho Trump show. So, US President Donald Trump's maiden visit to India will start on February 24 at Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad and the inauguration of the new Sardar Vallabhai Patel Stadium will take place, the largest cricket stadium in the world now. So, this uh, Kim Cho Trump is the event which will be held, Howdy Trump, the way we had Howdy Modi uh, uh, as such conducted in Houston and US when Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited US in September 2019. So now it is Trump's turn and uh, he will be re reprocreated with this event. In the Howdy Modi, we had 50,000 people, mostly Indian Americans, attending the event in which Trump also participated. Now, in this Came Show Trump event, which will be held at Sardar Vallabhai Patel Stadium, approximately 1.25 lakh people are expected to participate. So, this will be in Ahmedabad, which has emerged as a preferred venue to host foreign dignitaries. President Xi Jinping visited here of China, uh, Shinzo Abe of Japan, even ne Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was hosted here. Then next is center not to detain children left out of NRC. So government has decided not to send, uh, has decided not to send det to detention children who were excluded from NRC in Assam. So, such incidences have also taken place when the NRC exercise was conducted in Assam. Parents were included in the list, but children have been excluded. So, what to do? Because those who have been excluded will go to detention centers. So, here now government says that we will not send children to detention centers. So, out of 19 lakh people who were left out in the final list, which was published on, in August 2019, on August 31. So, now they have to challenge you know, the decision before the foreigners tribunals. But then still certified copies of exclusion have not been uh, issued to applicants and the process of challenging the order has not yet begun. But this is a reality on which a, an assurance has been given by the government that children will not be sent to detention centers. Then next is Delhi Dhaka for speedy return to Rohingya. So this is regarding the issue of repatriation of Rohingya migrants. So this has been discussed between India and Bangladesh at the highest level and both countries have agreed for the need to expedite their safe, speedy and sustainable repatriation to their homes in Myanmar. So they face persecution in Myanmar, going as they belong to the Rakhine state in Myanmar. And there are more than 1 million who have taken refuge in Bangladesh and there are some in India too. Uh, so here in India there are reports that Rohingya migrants, it is claimed by the government that some of them are indulging in illegal activities. And the government does not want to rehabilitate them in the country, though they are persecuted minorities in Myanmar. So, the instructions have been given by the central government of India to the states to ask the law enforcement and intelligence agencies to identify illegal migrants and restrict them to specified locations as per provisions of law. So, this is there. 
so here you can see since illegal migrants enter the country without valid document the data on the number of such illegal migrants uh, government says is not with the government it's not maintained centrally then next is coronavirus poses very grave threat to the world says world health organization so coronavirus outbreak in china may be over by april 2020 and this is what is expected but then deaths have surpassed 1000 and world health organization has warned global threat potential worse which is potentially worse than uh, terrorism chinese supply chains have been disrupted car manufacturers for smartphone makers they have been significantly affected so disease has been given an official name by world health organization too so new coronavirus is now called covid covid 19 which stands for corona virus disease for the year in which it was identified first in december 2019 then next is china denies role in cyber theft following equifax accusations so china has denied involvement in any hacking activity after us indicted four members of the chinese military for allegedly breaking into the computer networks of equifax credit reporting agency and stealing personal information of tens of millions of people so this is said to be the one of the biggest hacks in history targeting consumer data it is said some 145 million americans have been affected so china on its side says that such allegations are not true it says we are committed to firmly oppose and combat cyber attacks combat cyber attacks of any kind and it says we are a staunch defender of cyber security on on the other hand it uh, accuses usa saying that past events shows how usa is engaging in large scale organized and indiscriminate cyber stealing spying and surveillance activities on foreign governments enterprises and individuals china is also victim of us cyber threat so such uh, allegations and counter allegations are being made so this is regarding equifax credit reporting agency so the details are given here credit card number stolen so that is the equifax waited for 6 weeks to disclose the breach three executives even sold their stock before the announcement and a software fix available 2 months earlier was not installed so people were required to sign away their right to sue before equifax could provide any help so such steps have been taken by equifax washing its hands of this cyber cyber theft the next is economy not in trouble asserts fn so the economy is not in trouble is what finance minister nirmala sitharaman told the lok sabha in her response to the debate on the union budget she says green shoots including higher foreign investment improvement in industrial output and gst collections are evident and also all time high forex reserves which we have and stock market all been upbeat are signs that economy is not in trouble so she also outlined government initiatives to drive four engines of growth that is public sector public investment private investment public consumption and exports then next is the last news states given rupees 81043 crore as gst compensation for april to september so this is union minister of state for finance anurag thakur who have told uh, in a written reply to a question in the rajya sabha that center has released this much amount as gst compensation to states in this time period so gst compensation cess collection actually has shown an upward trend since october 2019 and under gst law states are guaranteed to be paid for any loss in revenue in the first 5 years of gst implementation that is till 2022 from 2017 onwards so the shortfall which is there so how will the shortfall be understood it is uh, assuming a 14% annual growth in gst collection by states over a base year of 2015 16 so if the states fall short based on this calculation then the actual collection is less then compensation cess compensation would be paid to them and how will this compensation come through a compensation cess which the central government has levied on luxury and demerit goods like you know alcohol um, cigarettes luxury cars etc so this compensation cess has been carried, uh, credited into a non lapsable fund known as goods and services tax compensation fund which forms part of public accounts of india so we have we know the various accounts that is consolidated fund of india contingency fund of india and public accounts of india so this goes into public accounts of india 
also for gst fraud cases have been reported there are 634 cases of fraudulent gst refund claim by exporters which amounts to 1912 crore rupees so this is a loss to the exchequer so central tax authorities have detected these frauds from 2017 to 2020 so now steps have been taken to tackle that the data analytics has been used to identify risky tax payers so this is the detail you can see regarding cess been imposed to compensation cess so gst rate highest gst rate is 28% then along with cess on it like for large cars it becomes the gst becomes 43% and cess has also been increased intermittently so now it is at 53% so that so maximum rate at which gst cess can be collected is given here for various uh, demerit goods or sin goods like pan masala motor cars tobacco products etc so these are and this is compensation which has been paid to states over the you can see so share of states major states is shown this is for financial year 2018 so that is it thank you